friendship isn't a big thing. It's a million little things, said Paolo Coelho. I'll take it again. Friendship isn't a big thing. It's a million little things. Good morning, Zion Dew family, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for sharing and for liking. Please don't stop. And if these messages, if these stories are blessing you, please share them with friends far and wide so that they too would be blessed and they too would be ministered to. We love to hear from you, so keep those comments coming. My name is Liz Kanye, and I'm here with another faith story, and I hope and uh, believe that you will be blessed. This story is one that is very dear to my heart, and I really enjoyed listening to it, and I hope that you will enjoy listening to it too. I'm going to start by reading a portion of scripture. I'm going to read from Mark chapter 2, from verse 1 to 5. And this is what the Bible says. After a few days, Jesus returned to Capernaum, and word got around that he was back home. A crowd gathered, jamming the entrance so no one could get in or out. He was teaching the word. They brought a paraplegic to him, carried by four men. When they weren't able to get in because of the crowd, they removed part of the roof and lowered the paraplegic on his stretcher. Impressed by their bold belief, Jesus said to the paraplegic, Son, I forgive your sins. Now the story continues um, about how the Pharisees, they asked some questions, but eventually this guy who was brought by his friends received his healing and he packed up his mat and he walked out of the place. Now today's story is about friends and friendship and how faith and friendship, they are very beneficial to one's life. This story was told to me by a friend of mine from West Africa. We're going to call him Pastor K. <clears throat> so Pastor K had a friend who was living in a certain village. Him and his wife, they were walking with this girl from this village. And um, they had been praying for her because she had some issues. So this girl had fibroids. And these fibroids had gotten to a place where they were really, really bad and they were making the quality of her life really, really poor, and something needed to be done. But then when Pastor Kay and his wife are praying, they could tell this thing was a spiritual thing, and she needed to get out of the place to be able to, to be sorted out. So just like the friends who went through the roof, this um, Pastor Kay and the wife, they called the girl and they told her to get out of her place, not to tell anyone where she was going, so she left. She didn't tell her family where she was going. She just told them she's around. She left the place and she went to an, another city about an hour away from where she came from. And she went and um, there was time for her to go through the vitals before the surgery is actually performed. So the icing on this cake is that um, Pastor Kay's wife had gone through a similar surgery. And she, it had been performed by a surgeon who was uh, part of their fellowship. They fellowshiped in the same church. He was a believer and all that. So they had not only faith in God, but also faith in this doctor. They knew this guy was a believer and was used by God a lot. So the girl comes and um, when it's time for surgery, Pastor K happens not to be there because he had to go to the capital. He needed to do some stuff. And so the wife was left with a girl. So the girl went to hospital and the surgery began and the doctor performed the surgery and all was well. So after the surgery, the doctor leaves. Usually, the, the, the surgeon is not the one who packs up the, you know, everyone has their job. So he's left the girl on the table, but everything was smooth. She was supposed now to be, I guess, wake up and then be wheeled back to um, the ward. He goes and he sits down and he asks for tea. And then he, in, in a fraction of a second, he hears a dog, a dog barking. And he just knew this was something spiritual and he knew it had something to do with the surgery that he had just performed. A few minutes later, he gets a phone call from the nurses in the, in the ward where he had left this girl recuperating. And they tell him that the girl has died. So he calls Pastor K. Remember Pastor K is where? In the capital. He calls Pastor K and he tells him 
that the girl has died. Now, imagine receiving such news. This girl went for surgery, and her parents do not know. People, her family, they do not know that she was going for surgery. Who signed for her to be operated on? Now, that was like a problem right there. But this guy was a man of prayer. So what did he do? He calls the wife, he calls other friends, and they begin to pray. Even the doctor, they prayed, they prayed. They're praying on phone. They prayed for about an hour. And then finally, they receive a phone call that the girl has come back to life. This is a girl who had died. Remember, this report is coming from the hospital. So she was medically proven dead. It feels funny just saying it. But yeah, she was dead. So um, the girl, she comes back to life. She recuperates and she gets out of hospital and she's discharged. And she gives them the story, what happened that time when she had died. Now this is the dramatic part. When she had died, she saw herself in a prison. She was somewhere caged and there were very many bad people surrounding her. And they could not allow her to go. She was tied, she was in a prison and all that. And then apparently, two guys showed up and they said, we have been sent by Pastor K. Are you the one we have been sent to? And she said, yes, because now she recognizes the name. So um, these guys, they got rid of all these other people. They are only two people. They got rid of all these bad people. They set her free. They released her from the cage. They released her from the shackles. And that is how she came back to life. That is how the story ends. So, um, I got thinking about friendships. Now, the story we read from Mark chapter 2, it's about four friends who brought their friend to Jesus. What kind of a friend are you? Are you like Pastor K and his wife? They are the kind of friends who brought their friend to Jesus because she needed healing. She needed to be gotten out of wherever she was and be brought to a place of faith. It is by faith that these people prayed. They could have given up because, I mean, medically proven, dead, and then you're praying. But they did pray. It is by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And um, I'm challenged to think about the kind of a friend I am and the kind of friends that I keep. Are they people who are willing to take me to Jesus? What about you? Are you that kind of a friend? When your friend is sick, do you do like what the Bible says in James chapter 5? Are you the kind of friend who wants to bring your friends to Jesus? This is our challenge today, that we be those kinds of friends. Friends who can carry people through a roof. Friends who are willing to remove, to destroy a roof to ensure that our friend meets with Jesus. And so before I go, I'd like to pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for your love. Thank you because you are a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And we desire to be like you. Your word says that we are made and created in the image of God. So we pray that you would help us to be that kind of friend for the glory and for the praise of your name. In Jesus' name.